Hey, it's Tracy Kelly and Tim, Tim Brown, Brown here from Hook Agency. And today we're talking about a poll we did. We're sharing the results. Cheers. Hope you guys are having a good one. Uh, oh, there you go. And we're sharing a poll that we did. We pulled 100 marketers and business owners as they planned for 2020. Yeah. And so we're going to share some statistics. This is instant gratification because we're going to get right <laughs> into the statistics very quickly. So the first one that we've got is, are you satisfied with your website's conversion rate? Yeah. And so what does that mean? Are you, are you satisfied with how many people that are showing up on your websites or turning into leads or sales? And an overwhelming 70% of people that we polled said that no, they are not satisfied with how many leads are, or how many visitors are turning into leads or sales. Yeah, so that's a lot of people that are not satisfied. And then, okay, so the second thing is 62% of companies polled said they believe a website should be redesigned every two to three years. What's what does that, what's significant about that? Does that strike you as interesting? I mean, for me, it, it feels like something I've heard before yeah. because we've talked to a lot of people that are doing websites, but I think maybe for some of our audience, um, I think that could be intriguing because we hang out with a lot of people, a lot of people in the construction world that wait five, six, seven years yeah. before redesigning their website. And the reality is, is people are way more sophisticated. Buyers are way more sophisticated. And if they're going to be spending a million dollars or more on a home, they want the company that they're working with to have a cool website. I would say two to three years. That seems really like, I, I think like it was interesting to me that 62% of people said that because honestly, I thought it would be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. I think like, yeah, like you said, just so many of the people that come to us, it's like that really quick. So, or, or sorry, not really quick. I mean, five years or more, like you said. Yeah. Um, let's see that we got one more thing. Uh, what percentage of your revenue do you spend on marketing? Yeah, this one, this one surprised me. 48% uh, of companies are spending between four and 10% of the revenue on marketing. And I think it should be a little bit more. I, yeah, I think, um, so the, the small business administration says like 11 or 12%. Yep. Um, so yeah, it should be a little bit higher if you're a small business, but I can't judge really. I think I just did the math on our thing and I don't think it was that crazy. It was not super nuts. It was basically like 7% or something like that. So I don't think that this is nuts, and I, but I definitely agree with you. Small businesses probably need to spend a little bit more on the percentage side than maybe like a giant company that's already been established. Yeah, if you're trying to get your name out there, it's super competitive. Um, you've got to work really hard. However, I, I will say this one caveat because I am a reader and a follower of the guerrilla marketing uh, guy. Yeah. And what his whole philosophy is is, you know, make your marketing work harder. And so, you know, I think if you're going out there and, you know, put a ton of effort on social media, you're putting a ton of effort into different avenues that don't cost a lot of money, but you've got a lot of effort and you're getting a lot of um, impressions and, and a lot of response from that. That's cool too, you know? And I think like part of the shift that people have to make is if you're spending money on um, people, Internally, like for instance, if you have a seller, if you're a business owner and 20% of your time is marketing, yeah, then that should count towards that budget. You can't yeah. just, you know, spend unlimited time. And, it, you know, at the beginning, I think there is something to the fact people need to spend more time than money on marketing. Yeah. So I think small business owners should kind of get that in their heads that, that it is Time to hustle. Like for instance, we always say like if you're under 500,000 in revenue, it's time to hustle. It's time to put in sweat equity. And then as you know, you get a little bit bigger, um, you do need to count the salaries in your team that, you know, the amount of time that's spent. So maybe it's a, a half of a person. Yeah. So a half of a person's salary is going towards that marketing or whatever it happens to be but making sure that you're actually counting that in because otherwise you might, you know, spend too much on the ads or other things. Yeah. You got to figure out how to make their time um, make you money. 
So it's figuring out what are those activities, I think, that people could just spend time on, spend time on, spend time on, and continue to get a pretty solid return. Yeah. And, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out because I my salary at one point was just marketing, right? Just marketing internally at a different company. And I said, well, what, what can I keep on doing? Because I ran out of things because I work hard and fast, right? Yeah. Now, but basically that idea of like, all right, I think content marketing is a spot where I could spend a lot of time. I could just, I could write, I could continue to write every day, all day, and it would never not be good, yep. right? And another one I found out was like writing for other sites and linking back to our website seemed to always be good no matter what, no matter how much time I spent on it, it would always be good for our Google ranking. And then basically just figuring out for you, what are those activities that lead to more sales that you can spend time on and making sure that you're kind of defining those for your internal people and then counting, counting part of their salary towards, yeah. towards that budget. So maybe it's proper attribution. Maybe yeah. That's why I'm surprised it's a little bit lower. It's people aren't attributing it correctly. That's abs that's totally possible. Um, and then the next one is about what type of marketing yeah. are you doing that seems to have the highest return on investment? So I would say I'm not surprised by this. I don't know if you were surprised by this, but it, if you want to share this stat. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, surprised, but you know, I'm happy based on where we're working, but over 50% of the companies uh, said that the highest return on investment for marketing activities. Wait, wait, don't tell it yet. So out of all the ones we're talking about, print yeah. advertising, trade show app marketing, podcasting, SEO, content marketing, paid search, paid display ads, paid social ads, LinkedIn outreach, email marketing, video marketing, and direct mail. So we're trying to give as all the, the, the main avenues for, Marketing and what were the highest ones? Yeah, they all had to do with search marketing. Search marketing. And I'll tell you why the, I was, I was excited to kind of see how many people said that. But if you think about it, Tim, this is, this is the modern buyer. This is the modern yeah. market. This is modern marketing. What, why is, why do I say that? Because traditional advertising, you're just like smacking your message over somebody's head. Yeah. And in today's world, when people, know that they're going to buy something, they, they want something, they go online and search at least to get some information at first. Right? So you need to be there. And people yeah. are realizing that being there when people are searching yep. is becoming a lot more important than just being at them at any random time, right? Like just interrupting their day is not enough anymore. You have to figure out how to be there when they're searching. And so those three main components that uh, got this were paid search, SEO, and content marketing. And I think content marketing kind of expands beyond search to, you know, social media and things like that as well, but they're all very much related to search. And kind of the other point I want to make is it doesn't mean those other things aren't valuable and those other things aren't helping with sales, but the search related is where you get the highest return. Because again, people that are going to Google and asking questions, when they are asking those questions and they're finding you, you're finding them at the right time. So just for other people joining the live right now, we've got, uh, we're doing statistics for marketing for 2020. We pulled over a hundred people that are in marketing or business owners and we're sharing those stats. We got two more left. We've got uh, one here. Yep. So the question was what percentage of your marketing spend will go, go towards digital marketing in 2020? Tim, what do people tell us? So 69.7% uh, of people said that they were spending less than half of their marketing budgets on digital and online marketing for 2020. You can imagine what I think about that. I think, sure. I think this is the day and age when people should be spending over half of their money on digital. Well, especially when we learn that the people that are spending are saying that they're getting their highest return on yeah. social related. Yeah, that's again, weird. Why is it weird? Like, People are creatures of habits. Yeah. You know, you took last year's marketing plan and you, you basically use that as a framework for this year. Yeah. And you did, you know, you've got the same vendors that you've been doing mailers with forever. Um, 
so I get, I, I understand and I can empathize with people why they're doing it. You know, it can be risky. It can be scary if you've never done anything uh, digital or you haven't done a lot or. I just think it's important to do that exercise of where leads are coming from. You got it. Figure out where your ROI is and then actually double down and push on those things and do, do some calculations around how much money you're spending on those things versus how much money they're making. And if you have clear attribution, I don't see how people are going to continue to not spend on digital, but I like it. I like that maybe our competitors or, you know, your competitors might be spending more money on classic traditional marketing. Yeah. I think that's great. Yep. I like it. I don't like it if you're our client and you're doing <laughs> that because basically I believe that digital is, um, has a lot higher return on investment. Yeah. The message is if you are in an industry that, traditional marketing is a big thing. Now's your opportunity to really go out and own the digital space, especially I mean, there are so many industries right now that are not digital heavy. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you can yeah. go out and you partner with a group like us or, you know, there's other good, strong marketing companies that know how to do digital. Well, it's, there's still an opportunity to go out and really dominate your market. That's the fun and exciting part. That's kind of why I get excited about some of the clients that we work with because their industries aren't necessarily ingrained in digital like others. And so you can go and work with a client in the middle of Maryland and quickly turn them from kind of a middle of the road participant in the market in terms of how they look online to like the clear market leader and you've got people chasing them all of a sudden. So what is the ideal length for a blog post on your site? People said overwhelmingly that they prefer 200 to 700 words. Well, I get why you prefer that as a writer. Um, you want to do a quick post, but unfortunately Google's algorithm really does prefer longer content. Um, so data driven analysis, the ideal length to rank number one on Google, 2,450 words. I think even people that do these blog posts about the what size a blog post should be are scared to say <laughs> 2,450 words. I was scared to say it. I don't, I thought about it again in the shower this morning. This might be a weird shower thought, but I literally thought, I think I should change that to something lower so it seems more reasonable. But Google, is saying 2004 it's 200 2450 words is the average length of the number one spot why would we change it why would we make it anything different so the truth is people uh google loves longer posts if you can get closer to that at least get over a thousand words i think that that's a really good habit to get into and that is everything for our marketing statistics for 2020 I'm gonna leave it in the comments. We've got a ton of other statistics. We've got 30 total that uh, you should check out. And we really appreciate you guys joining us for Monday Morning Marketing and Comedy. Big shout out, big shout out to everybody that filled out the survey. We yeah. talked to a lot of marketers, we did a lot of outreach. And so we just, I wanna say thank you. Absolutely, so cheers. Cheers. And I hope you guys have an amazing Monday, an amazing week and do more of what you love. Do a little bit more of what you love this week and I hope that you guys enjoy your day. Hey, bye guys.